And Brandon, let's move on into that next team. And Demon Deacons fans, if you're uh, coming on to listen in full podcast, apologize if I pissed you off during that Boston College segment. Yeah, I hope you came back. Because most of them were probably like, we're, we're going to be Boston College. Don't worry about that. But we're going to look at the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, Brandon, for the 2018 season. And the first question I want to ask you has to do with the quarterback situation because you've got – John Warford, he's gone, and then you're like, "All right, so Kendall Hill, Hill, or Kendall Hill Hinton is going to be the guy, but he's not going to be there the first. Th- well, he's not going to be playing the first three games due to violating team rules, and he's also a guy that has a bit of an injury history, usually with the good old knee. We've talked about knee injuries, I feel like enough on this podcast, but." The big question is what is going to happen with the quarterback situation, mainly because it's like, yes, Hinton's going to be the guy, but will he be the guy after those first three games, which will be at Tulane versus Towson, and then that Boston College game that we had just talked about moments ago. So let me ask you this. What's going to happen? We'll start with the quarterbacks. What's happening with the QBs with Wake Forest this year? Well, I think that that's that's going to be the, the the biggest question right now for for Wake Forest, and which is why I think it is hard to say. And now people will probably be upset with me. Mm-hmm. I think it is hard to say that with certainty Wake Forest would be able to get that win over Boston College because right now they're losing the quarterback that probably could have given them the win over Boston College mm-hmm. College and John Wolford, and they're moving to a guy in Kendall Hinton who who is more of a runner anyways. Um, but you know, he's a, he's, he's a guy who, like you said, injury history, you're out three games for violating team rules. If, and when you do come back, Mm -hmm. how quickly do you find your rhythm? How quickly do you really get immersed into the offense and get that rapport with the receivers and feel comfortable in the pocket? How long does that take? A quarter? A half, a game, two games. Mm-hmm. You know how how long is that going to be? Thankfully, the O line returns all five starters. Three that earn all ACC honors, so that's a huge plus mm-hmm. for Wake Forest. That's going to be big for for them and the quarterback, but it's going to be even bigger for the running backs. And they've got three good ones, three really dynamic guys. They've got a speedster, a bruiser, and a guy who's just kind of the all-purpose. And and that's going to be very, very helpful for them. And being able to run behind that brick wall of an offensive line is is certainly going to be going to be good for them. But again, it, everything's kind of going back to the quarterback. Everything's going back to the quarterback. You want to be able to have your best guy in there. Mm-hmm. But you also want to know that you can depend on him in terms of, I mean, you violate team rules, and we don't know what, what it was that he violated in terms of the matter. rule. He's out for but three it doesn't games. matter. You're out for three mm-hmm. games, and what does that mean? You're not going to be playing. It means you're not helping your team win games, even though, even though they're not against Clemson, they're not mm-hmm. against the but it doesn't does it matter? It I doesn't think it ma- does matter. And the only reason I, why I'm going to say that is when it comes to the games Hinton will not be playing, let's be completely honest, they'll probably go 2-1. and one. They'll probably still beat Tulane. They'll probably still beat Towson. Boston College is basically the only game that becomes probably a flip now with Hinton being out. The thing, though, that it affects is we assume that Hinton will be then back September 22nd, his first game, you get thrown to the Wolves, basically. You're playing Notre Dame, who, yeah, they might not be the best team in college football, but still, they're a tough team to play right away. And then it's like you get a race game in there, and then boom, right away, Clemson, Florida State. Just boom, boom, right away. And that Florida State game is in Tallahassee. So it's like, for me... With you not being able to play those first three games, what are we going to see? Are we going to see some hiccup in the Notre Dame game? Is two games, Notre Dame and Rice, enough for you to be ready, rearing to go against when Clemson comes to town? Because we know how good Clemson will probably be this year. I doubt them even without Deshaun Watson, and they still make the playoff and still go 12-2 and last year. 
is two games going to be enough to get ready for that? And are you even going to be, let's be completely honest, is Hinton, Hinton going to be even enough to give the Demon Deacons an edge over Clemson? Spoiler alert, he's probably not. Clemson wins that game anyway. So, I mean, for me, yeah, it could be 2-1, and one, but then Notre Dame could be a question. All right, now you're 2-2. Two and two. Rice, I'll give you a win there, 3-2. and two. But then, boom, boom, you could be right back down to 3-4, and four. By the time you get to that Louisville game on Halloween weekend. I just want to go back to something that, mm-hmm. that you kind of said at the beginning. You said you don't think that it matters that he's out for those three games. No, I said I think it does. It does. It does. Okay. It does matter because if if he was starting day one, I would feel a little, even though I would still say Clemson wins the game. I would feel a little bit more confident in his ability come Clemson, Florida State. More so Florida State because he would have two, three, four, five games to get into a rhythm where, I'm going to be honest, two games might not be enough to get into as good of a rhythm as you want when you're going to go play Clemson that third game. Okay, because I thought you had said that it doesn't matter, no, and I was going to say it absolutely does matter because you're not there for your teammates and you're letting your teammates down for the first three games, mm-hmm. even if they're not all huge games. Yeah, that even are... if you're still going to go two and one. In exactly. Games. But I, I, I want to just turn things over now to the defense where I think we may be looking at another team where defense is going to be something to be to be – to wait on mm-hmm. and see where they end up being at. So you look at an offensive line that's going to be really good. You look at a defensive line that should be really good. You look at a linebacking position that's probably going to be of greatest concern. All the starters are gone. The, res- the returners are shaky at best. That's going to be a problem. And then over the last six games of the season, Wake Forest allowed an average of 380 passing yards per game. The mm-hmm. secondary has got to be cleaned up. They lost Jesse Bates, uh, one of their safeties. He mm-hmm. went to the NFL early. And then they're, they're, they're going to be moving a receiver, Chuck Wade, into Bates' spot and hope that he's going to be able to uh, uh, get, get the job Can done. Can I ask you so this? It, it's worked out before. But that's a little shaky. Let me ask you this when it comes to the defense. So last year, the defense had, you had a new coordinator in Jay Shovel, and then two new assistants come in. And here's a quote from Shovel, and I want you, I'm, I'm going to ask you what you think about this. He said, at times, the new coaches weren't on the same page. All these guys have had a year, we've looked at it, We see our mistakes. Put yourself in the shoes of a Wake Forest Demon Deacon fan. Hearing that from your defensive coordinator heading into this year after the defense took a step back last year, does that quote ensue confidence in you? Because for me, it does not. Does not ensue, we saw our mistakes. We'll be better. It's like it, it, it doesn't do enough for me. I don't know what I'd be expecting him to say, but just saying, like, yeah, we looked at it, there were mistakes. It was like, yeah, no shit there were mistakes. I could have seen them, too. Like, what do you think of those comments? Well, I, I think that uh, it, it certainly makes sense when he says that we weren't on this, they weren't on the same page mm-hmm. uh, because of the fact that you had the last six games where you gave up 380 passing yards a game. Yeah, I don't think you were on the same page. You are completely right. Thank you for letting us know now after we already knew it. I hope those pages have page numbers this year. Yeah. I, I, but you know what? I think for me, if I'm a Demon Deacon fan, mm-hmm. I'm pissed because it's like, how are you not on the same page? Mm-hmm. Why were you not on the same page? How you know? Why didn't you correct that then and there during the season? Mm-hmm. But I am somewhat comforted to believe that that will not happen again this season. So mm-hmm. I'm pissed because it happened, but I'm moving on because they're telling me that they've worked out the kinks, they've worked out the issues. They figured out where the mistakes are. They're correcting them, and they should be. Uh, they should be better this year. They should have those fixed. Now, here's what I'm looking at, and for me, the Demon Deacons will probably like. I know the defense is. I'm just gonna say it. I know the defense is bad, 
and it's not really a not Louisville spot. bad, not Louisville bad, but and I know you're going to have all the questions that we've talked about with the quarterback. However, I look at this schedule, and I'm kind of in my head, kind of thinking about all right, what kind of a win range they could be between. I could see them being the same as they were last year, like a eight and four, seven and five kind of a team. Because right now, I I was looking through. I'm like, all right, where are my losses going to come? Right now, you're not going to have Hinton for the Boston College game. I like Boston College better on paper than I like Wake Forest. I'm going to give that game to Boston College. Although Wake Forest went into Boston College last year and got that win, I think the Eagles get their revenge at Wake Forest this year. So that's loss number one. I think Hinton's not going to look very good in his first game back. I think Notre Dame gets the win over the Demon Deacons. That's loss number two. Clemson will be loss three. Florida State will be lost four. NC State will be lost five. Now here's where the range comes from. Five is your absolute best in my mind. Seven and five is your absolute best. However, I could see this team between seven and five and maybe five and six with those two up in the air games being two of three. Syracuse, Pitt, and Duke. One, two of those games, maybe none of those games, but maybe one or two of those games, Syracuse is the real one I'm looking at. Just something about one of those three games just kind of says to me, yeah, the Demon Deacons might drop one or two of those three to finish maybe two or two, two and two or three and or one and three in their last four games to end the season. I see this team as a six or seven win team. Six or seven. Uh, I see a win against Tulane, uh, Towson, Rice, probably Louisville, even though it's on the road. Most likely Syracuse, Pitt, and Duke. Seven wins. Seven wins. So you would have them seven and five. That's 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 their cap, though, for me. Mm-hmm. That's how many I believe that they could win. Yeah. Could they also be a, a, a six and six? Mm-hmm. I could also see that, too. I... I, I I don't see this team being as good as it was last year. No. Because they've because mm-hmm. no matter what the quarterback does, whoever the quarterback is, mm-hmm. they're not going to be John Wolford. They're no. not. They're not going to throw for 3,100 yards, 29 touchdowns, and six picks. They're not going to be that efficient. They're not going to be that consistent. I don't see that. I think they're taking a definite step back at the quarterback position. They're not even sure who they're going to go with. They don't even know who will be their quarterback at the end of the season. If I had to put my money on, and this is kind of a question that you asked me with, I think it was the Boston College preview that we did. Maybe it was the Louisville, but I think it was the Boston College where you asked me this. Now that we're getting more and more through this side of the division, the picture kind of becomes more clear in your head. Yeah. And for me, if I had to put my money on what the order would look like in this division at the end of the year, Clemson number one, NC State number two, Boston College number three, Florida State number four, Wake Forest, Louisville, Syracuse. That's what I would maybe go with. However, the... Florida State to Louisville, Florida State, Wake Forest, and um, and Louisville might be more fluid. Those three teams will be close, maybe like tied the same record, maybe four and four, three and five, and then Syracuse will be below them with the top three, Boston College being like, I don't know, five and three, then NC State being six and two. Clemson being seven and one. Like that's where I see Wake Forest being this year, where you're no longer the third best in the ACC. You're more towards that bottom half, closer to the Louisville and Syracuse this year at the bottom. I could see you being right. I, I just I don't see Wake Forest being the number three team this year. I, I think they they owed a lot of that again to their offensive mm-hmm. production from last season. And while they do return some good running backs and uh, you know, I think some solid receivers. They and a very good offensive line. 
they're they're looking at a couple of question marks defensively once you go past the the offensive the, the pardon me the defensive line and that 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 quarterback that, that it's looming it's looming a little too much for mm-hmm. me right now for and, and there's no definitive answer on who well, it's going to be and the, when the one guy and it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that spot the, the one thing I'll ask you that we didn't ask maybe it's not even important to ask this question but with you let's just say for the first 3 games while Hinton is out do you think it's going to be a Jamie Newman who had some passes last year or will it be a Sam Hartman either one i think it's a toss up i i, I mean i don't see basically it's a it doesn't matter who plays these games we'll go 2 and 1 we'll beat Tulane we'll beat Towson we'll lose to Boston College well most likely you the thought is that you you will you mm-hmm. will beat Tulane and and, and Towson. Mm-hmm. They're not guarantees, but They're, no game is a guarantee mm-hmm. unless it's Mercer uh, and Alabama's playing them. But uh, that's or the only, Citadel. It's the only guarantee <laughs> game I'll, I'll, I'll give anybody. But uh, yeah, you you should be win those two games. You should be two and zero. And mm-hmm. then Boston College, Boston College is you know is a, is a toss up. It's still early in the season for both teams. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I just like it, Boston College be, better on paper. Yeah, it'll it'll yeah. I mean, so do I. So do I. But again, still early in the season. Teams are working out their kinks. You mm-hmm. just you just don't know. Uh, I mean, we saw Clemson last year. At, yeah. at the, in their what seventh or eighth game, mm-hmm. and they and it, that was not early in the season necessarily. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, they lose to to Syracuse on the road, twenty seven twenty four. So anything could happen. But again, with 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 whether it's Newman, whether it's Hartman, that's a toss up for me. There's mm-hmm. not one over the other that I'm like, oh gosh, you got to put this guy in for sure. The guy they probably want in there is Kendall Hinton, but right now he's not one hundred percent. He's out for the first three games, so they don't have that option. Any final thoughts on Wake Forest before we move into the top two dogs in no. this division and. We will move on. So we're going to throw the question on to you guys, Wake Forest fans. What do you guys think for your Demon Deacons this season? Will it be a good season? Will it be a bad season? Are we just two Debbie Downers on the Wake Forest Demon Deacons for 2018? Let us know what you guys think down below in that comment section. 